The following video addresses the basic maintenance and repair of the Series 919 Backflow Prevention Assemblies, sizes quarter inch through two inch. Before beginning any work, please familiarize yourself with these procedures to avoid harming yourself or damaging the valve. A copy of these instructions, as well as specification sheets, repair kit ordering information, and additional product resources can be found online at watts.com. To open and inspect your valve, you will need a wrench, a flathead screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver, and an FDA approved lubricant. The 919 Backflow Prevention Assembly features two check assemblies, differentiated as the number one and number two checks respectively, and a relief valve. Each check features a cover o-ring, a spring, a check disc holder assembly, which includes the check disc rubber, a check disc washer and a disc screw, the check seat, and finally, the seat o-ring. The relief valve features a quad ring, the cover o-ring, the diaphragm assembly, which includes the diaphragm nut, the diaphragm, the relief valve disc and the stem, a spring, the seat, and finally, the seat o-ring. Each of these components should be inspected, cleaned, or ultimately replaced if necessary during a repair. Start by shutting down the system by closing the outlet and inlet ball valves. Relieve the pressure trapped within the assembly by slowly opening the number 4, number 3, and number 2 test cocks. Loosen the check valve cover with a wrench and finish on threading by hand. Be aware, each of the checks features a heavy spring load which may eject quickly as the cover is removed. Remove the check cover along with the cover o-ring, the spring, the disc holder assembly, and the seat. Each check component should be inspected to ensure the correct operation of the unit. In order to inspect the rubber, first disassemble the disc holder as shown. Start your inspection by rinsing each check component to remove any dirt or debris. Dry thoroughly before proceeding. Closely inspect the disc rubber for any nicks, cuts, or hidden debris. If one side of the rubber is damaged, it can be flipped and reinstalled temporarily until new repair parts are available. If both sides are damaged, it should be replaced immediately before reinstallation. Reinstall the washer and reconnect the assembly with the screw. Likewise, inspect the seat and seat o-ring. Replace if necessary. Reinstall the o-ring around the base of the seat. Finish by inspecting the cover o-ring and reinstalling it around the cover. After your inspection, lubricate both the cover and seat o-rings before reinstallation. Place the seat module into the body seat bore. The seat module will be properly engaged later in the procedure as the check cover is threaded onto the valve. Reinstall the disc holder and replace the spring ensuring that it sits properly on the disc holder. Place the cover onto the spring with the internal guide on the cover positioned within the end coil. Screw the cover into place and tighten it with a wrench. With the first check inspected and repaired as needed, repeat the previous procedure for the second check. In order to access the relief valve for inspection and repair, first remove the three bolts holding the cover in place. While applying firm pressure to the cover with your hand, turn the cover counterclockwise for a quarter turn and lift it straight off. Due to the release of pressure when removing the cover, the relief valve spring may eject quickly. Remove all the relief valve components, including the relief valve seat. In order to inspect the diaphragm, first disconnect the diaphragm assembly by removing the nut. To inspect the rubber, disconnect the relief valve screw. Rinse each component to remove any dirt or debris and dry thoroughly. Begin by inspecting the disc for nicks or cuts and replace if damaged. Reinstall the disc rubber.
closely inspect the diaphragm for any nicks, cuts, or debris, and once again, replace it if damaged. Once inspected, rebuild the diaphragm assembly with the molded step of the diaphragm pointed down towards the relief valve stem. Firmly tighten the nut. Inspect the relief valve seat and seat o-ring for damage or debris. Clean or replace as needed. Finish by inspecting the cover and the cover o-rings. After your inspection, lubricate each of the cover o-rings and the seat o-ring before reinstallation. Begin reassembling the relief valve as shown with the seat entering first, then the spring, diaphragm assembly, and the cover. To replace the cover, first line up the cover grooves with the grooves within the relief valve body and turn a quarter turn clockwise. Ensure that the cover is properly seated. While applying firm pressure to the relief valve cover, replace the bolts and tighten evenly until the cover lies flat against the relief valve body. If the cover does not lie flat against the relief valve body, the diaphragm assembly is not installed properly and damage can result. Remove the bolts and cover, realign the diaphragm assembly, and place the cover back on the relief valve body. With the valve reassembled, restart the system by first slowly opening the inlet ball valve halfway. Close the number two, number three, and number four test cocks as water begins to flow continuously through the open port, purging all trapped air from the valve and allowing you to safely finish opening the inlet and outlet ball valves. For more information on local startup and testing procedures, consult your local municipality or manufacturer's representative.